It slices, it dices, it fills out your Season 3 Transformers Shelf Collection. It's none other than Studio Series 86, Wrecker. And he's going to be our focus this time around in the latest Got By True review. Hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, a.k.a. Godbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe while you're at loud my baby, and hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. I'll let you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor, all the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that, man, in the description down below. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. And this is the King of Trash, the Junkion Ambassador himself, if you will. This is, of course, Rekgar. And, like, we've gotten Rekgar in the past. And none of them have been ideal. They've all been in the spirit of a Junkion, in the spirit of Rekgar, but none of them have, have exactly been ideal. Is this guy? It depends on how you look at it. Either he is or he's close to it. This is a surprisingly good offering in many, many ways. So without any further ado, let's head over to the table and take a closer look at this guy. And so, yes, we continue with Wave 2 of Studio Series 86. We already looked at Slug slash Slag, if you will, a little while ago. I thought that that was stupendously well done. That was episode 889, so fairly recently. And now we kind of continue the trend by looking at Rekgar. And I'm really excited about this. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about him being a Voyager. But, as time has gone on, I gotta say, man, I'm pretty darn impressed. As a matter of fact, I think Voyager might be the way to go. But before we look at him, you know what we gotta do. That's right, baby, look at that packaging first. And it's Studio Series 86 packaging. Uh, we have Rekgar, of course, here and here. By the way, I don't know if anyone has ever really noticed it, but the 86 line, while it's 86, you really only need one of them to kind of stand in and in studio series they all do have their own little numbers like this guy is like 09 or whatever right so it's something worth noting if you hadn't noticed it before that there is little numbering on it uh your wreck our image again over here and on the back of course we have all of the uh like product shots and all that stuff and inside we have the scene that is the Junkie on Dance Party apparently this time. And you can take old Rekgar here and plop him right there. And like he, I mean, he actually fits in fine with this d display. Um, yeah, it makes total sense. We've got a big set of instructions here. Uh, it, yeah, okay, it looks cool, I guess. They're all right. Let's get this out of the way right away. He is a true blue Voyager. Actually, he's one of the bigger Voyagers. I've always said that Voyagers range between about uh, 145 to 165 grams of plastic. This big boy, 161 grams of plastic. A true blue Voyager. Great start. And here our boy is next to the Reveal the Shield Deluxe Class Rekgar, as well as the Power of the Primes Rekgar. The Power of the Primes was probably a bit closer to uh, chest animation accuracy, but there was always something charming about the Reveal the Shield, even though the transformation's a little bit bonkers to it. I like both of these Rekgars, but they weren't an ideal Rekgar. We were still waiting on that. And in terms of Voyagers, here he is with Siege, Springer, Earthrise, Optimus, and like he fits in just fine, obviously. So just how ideal is this Rekgar, since I said we're still looking for an ideal Rekgar? Well, that depends, really, on what animation you go with. Based on the movie and most of the episodes, he had a coloration scheme really pretty much identical to this. If we start from the top... Uh, we have his little antennas that are colored correctly. We have the, uh, I, I'll call it the top of um, the windshield of the motorcycle. Uh, that's painted right. The red, just the, like here on his forehead is correct. The face is correct. The chest being red is correct. His little chest nipple blasters, 
don't know what else to call them. Uh, they're correct. The brown on his shoulders, correct. The lighter brown, I'll call it, taupe, that's on his biceps, correct. The gray on his forearms and the orange, correct. The coloration of that taupe on the hands, correct. His red axe with the uh, grayish silver handle, correct. Uh, the tires with the red spikes and the yellow detailing with the um, like silver in the middle, correct. The spikes on his arms, correct. The spikes on his legs, correct. The topi color of the abdomen, correct. Same with the pelvis being brown and the saddlebags on his sides being uh, the grayish color that they should be. I feel like the saddlebags stick off a little bit far, but I notice it more on camera than I do in person. The orangey-ish, salmon-ish, orangey-ish color of the upper thighs, correct. This in here, correct. The taupey color down there, correct. The red and the orangey color on the toes, correct. Except this centerpiece on the red should be that orangey color as well. <laughs> minor, minor gripe. I mean, 9.9. .9. That being said, the big broadcast of 2006 gave him a different color scheme. So if you're going on that one, then this isn't correct, and this is more like an 8, but I think it was only that one episode where the alternate color scheme was used. And what's the difference? Instead of taupe on his tummy, we have that orangey color. Uh, instead of silver and orange on his forearms, we have red in where the silver is, and silver out where the orange is. Uh, and then on his lower legs, the kind of like taupey color is in here, and all out around is like gray or silver and his toes are that taupey color. So it does vary a bit because this is based on the film and the film went with the first color scheme that I detailed. I'm gonna say it's a 9.9. .9. We're only missing one detail and that's just that little detail right there on the top of the foot. I mean, pretty much perfect. What about the articulation for the guy? Well, we do have a head that can go left and right, uh, can look up, not really much down, the arms, they can go all the way around, out to the side, nice molded in detail underneath here, way out, even up past the bit of uh, molding, I think, right there, just barely. So nice attention to detail there. We do have 90 degrees at the elbow. We do have an elbow swivel. Um, do we have anything at the wrist? I don't think we... Oh, we do have a wrist rotation. I'm sorry. I have one of these little spikes slightly bent that I, I, I need to deal with, but that's minor. Uh, the saddlebag things on the sides, they can get out of the way. The legs can go all the way out on a soft ratchet. Uh, they can go, bring this down, I guess. They can go all the way back. They can go uh, all the way forward. 90 degrees at the knee. Ankle tilt and ankle forward and back as well. Um, oh, and he has a waist. And though mine doesn't tab in well here, like there's a tab, there's a brown tab right there that should tab into a rectangular slot down there. Mine doesn't really stay. So mine, like I guess everybody's, has an ab crunch if you untab that. On mine, it kind of comes untabbed by itself. Anyway, minor, minor. Um, tolerance issue. I won't even call it the QC issue really because to be fair, he still functions just fine with that not tabbing him perfectly. It just means he got an easier ab crunch for me to animate. That's all. Uh, pretty darn happy with the articulation. I don't think that there's anything more I could really want. Uh, I think if you want articulated fingers, I guess. Again, I'm going to say 9.9. .9. I, honestly, 10. I don't think there's much more I could want. And I mean, like, he's clean from the front, or as clean as Rekka is going to be from the front, clean from the side, not a huge backpack or anything. And then when you do look at the back, like, it's it's still nice and clean. And though we do have, like, his head is like a false front of the motorcycle, the real front of the motorcycle is bent down in the body. I'm okay with that this time around for two reasons. Well, first... I don't really care too much if there are faux parts used. But for those who do, there are two reasons why I think it's okay this time around. One, because the faux piece isn't just hanging out somewhere. It's tucked away inside the body so you can almost forget it exists and sort of trick your own mind into, yeah, this is the front of the motorcycle. His head is the front of the motorcycle. The second reason that I think it's okay and acceptable is because when you do flip it out and you're transforming this guy to motorcycle, 
the actual head does go up into the faux piece. So it's like the actual head goes into the exact same place that the faux piece is. It's just the faux piece is bigger so that it, um, I guess, matches up more with the actual motorcycle. Uh, yeah, really, honestly, really impressed. I mean, 9.9 .9 and... But I'm going to call it 10. You, if you really want to nitpick about the fingers, you could say a 9.9 .9 again. Pretty much a perfect wreck car so far. What about the transformation? I like it, but I mean, it won't be for everyone. The uh, axe needs to come out of his hand. By the way, if you're so inclined, there is a little 3mm port back here. And you can take the axe... And you can put it on his back if you don't want it in his hand in a robot mode. But we're going to take that off for now and we're going to remove this tire it does like to stay in there and we're going to remove <coughs> that tire for now i'm going to get him set up and then we'll start the transformation all right so we've got his tires off obviously there are a little bit of parts forming such is life with the tires i mean the reveal the shield didn't have the tires come off and a lot of people have said like that is a bit cumbersome to do. So maybe taking the tires off is the lesser evil here and makes the most sense. We're going to begin by folding the hands in. By the way, there is hollowness in the forearms. So for anybody who's been saying, yeah, but the new stuff has no hollowness. That's why it's so much better and more pricey. Um, I told you it wasn't going to last very long and it's already not because his thighs I also have hollowness. It doesn't bother me, but for anybody who is, you know, really opposed to it, we got the price hike, like I said, we accepted it as a fandom, and then I asked everybody, I said, what do you think they're going to take away next? Well, they're taking away some of the filler next, right? Instead of having a panel to cover that back for them, they don't. That being said, he's still a Voyager with excellent engineering, excellent articulation, solidity, uh, and he has the mass, so I'm happy. Uh, but getting back to the transformation, so we take that off, um, or sorry, we put the, the hands up inside. Then we should be able to come here and get the front off and we're going to get those arms out. And then you kind of pick the entire front off. There's a hinge down here and you're unfurling the hinge basically. What you do to go back to uh, robot mode is you need to fold this in and what ends up basically happening is you fold that down like that, fold it down like that. There's a little tab there that goes into a little slot up underneath. You fold it down like that and bring it in. That's how you'll go back to robot. I just wanted to point that out because it can be a little bit of a nuisance. The fake part comes out here the very first time that I took it out. Scared me a lot because it was super duper tight. I guess you can angle these up a little bit. They are soft rubbery plastic. plastic. I hope that they are more durable than what the Reveal the Shields ones were. Mine are fine, but a lot of people have broken them over the years. This piece here, this piece here will go up inside that false piece like that, right? You push up the hinge here in the tummy, just like that. You can then take the arms and they come all the way down under. And when you bring them down, you're gonna to want to straighten it so that the, naturally, so that the um, spike is on the outside. There's a little slot in the bicep and a little red tab in the bottom of this. And that's what kind of solidifies the arms into position. You have to get that little red tab into the little slot on the bicep think I got them in and that's basically the front of the bike done I don't have the tires put in uh, actually I should I guess I should untab one of these and put the tire in hey hey there's a, a circle in right there that has a, a screw in. by the way this guy has screws in him not pins which I find very interesting that they put screws back in this guy rather than pins there, that's the front of the bike all done. Then we come here and you wanna make sure that you have that hinge all the way up. It might be down and you might see some gray here, but make sure you pop it all the way up and then extend the body like that. That way it gives you the, basically the seat here we'll say. You're gonna to want to take the toes and bring them down 
and then bend the knee forward until it clicks. Toes down, knee forward until it clicks. You want to take the rear tire and again, see if I can show this. Here on the back of the leg you have a port to put it in and then this one comes down and it should solidify around, I hope. There, like that. And then basically what you're going to do is bring the feet up. There's a little rectangular tab here on the brown. There's a little slot here on the toe. You're going to bring that toe up so that it goes over that brown. And you're going to bring that toe up over here. So it too goes up over that brown. You're going to make sure that you got that seat straightened out. And you're going to take the axe and there's another little three millimeter port, I'll call it back there, and you're going to put the axe, is it, oh, I was putting it in the wrong one, you're going to put it back there, and in the end, boom, here you have Retgar in his motorcycle mode. Now again, based on the animation, this is about as close as you're going to be able to get uh, considering the limitations of working with the robot. First, this is very, very, very accurate to the uh, G1 toy. Secondly, when it comes to the animation, I mean, we do have uh, the correct saddlebags here. This should be that orangey color, and it is. Uh, all of this along the side is correct, with the spikes also being correct. Obviously, this is where, like, your feet are intended to go uh, in, I, I don't know, like when you're traveling, I suppose, you know, when you're, when Rekgar is being ridden by another Autobot, I don't mind him being so big because I think that these are supposed to be intended for like other Transformers to ride. The front is correct. The flame detail here is correct. Put on quite nicely. The seat is brown. I wish the seat was, I don't know, more like a, a black, but it is what it is, uh, and then back between the saddlebags should be a red color. That's not quite there, but this is this is about as good of a motorcycle as I could hope for. Um, I don't know, can Optimus Prime, for example, ride on him? I mean, kinda, I guess he could. I don't know, what about, uh, what about a Power of the Primes record? Like, just for interest sake here. Because why not? Can Power of the Primes Wrecker ride Studio Series? I've heard that the Studio Series can ride the Studio Series, but I only have one, so I, I, I can't test that. Yeah, he rides them pretty well. So, I don't know. That's neat, I suppose. All in all, I think the transformation is a 10. It is intuitive. It's logical. There's a lot of moving parts that keep it interesting. The way the chest unfurls and the way the faux piece folds out and the way that the head goes inside so that the head is still in the position it should be in despite the faux piece. Everything tabs together securely really in this mode. Ten, honestly, Rekgar might just be an example of a perfect or as close as you're going to get to perfect Transformer. And here we are once again and here he is and I mean, he's pretty much a perfect Voyager. He is really close. I would put him up there with Generation Springer, which was tremendously well done. This guy is way up there. He has the mass coming in with a lot of heft, over 160 grams, so a bigger one. He has a respectable amount of paint on him, actually, quite a bit. He has interesting engineering. There's a lot here to like and very little to not like. What don't I like? Uh, I wish that this tab for me tabbed in more secure. I don't know if it's just my copy or widespread. Uh, besides that, I hope that these um, handlebars, which feel kind of soft rubbery plastic, I hope they hold up over time. Other than that, I don't know if there's anything about this guy I don't like. I pointed out kind of <laughs> kind of sarcastically um, that you know there's hollowness here in the leg and there's hollowness here in the arm and of course when the prices first went up and I started noting it and pointing things out one of the things that a lot of people originally came back with during siege 
uh, was that, yeah, but now you don't have all this hollowness. And I said, how long do you think that's going to last? They're not going to drop prices. They're just going to start cutting stuff again. And sure enough, that's what they've started doing. This hasn't gone back down to $29.99. If anything, this has gone up now here in Canada from $39.99 to now $44.99. Um, it's a $29.99 offering, you know? Like, here's the thing. Do I feel like I overpaid for it? No, I don't because I paid the $39.99 and I do feel like there's more paint here than we had before. So uh, I kind of justify it that way. That being said, I wouldn't want to pay $44 for it uh, and I wouldn't. I, I, on sale, maybe? Great mold. I would like other junkions. I'm not paying close on $50 taxes in for it. That's nuts. Uh, but that being said, this is probably going to be the last Rekgar I ever need to get for my collection. And that makes me very happy. I think he's a tremendous offering. If you're on the fence about him, don't be. You might slightly overpay for him, but I think he's so good and feels so good that I think it's a pill that we as collectors will all be able to swallow and say, you know what, maybe it was a few dollars over, but... Honestly, he makes me happy, and I think he'll make you happy, too. Let me know what you think about Studio Series 86 Rekgar. I appreciate you guys coming by and giving me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you're in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring, or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member. Don't forget that somehow, some way, each and every single day, man, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop motion premieres or the old fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.